here's the construction. E tilde equal to space of equivalence classes of Cauchy sequences. Um, in E. So in E tilde, right, so you like um, Xn, Yn are, you know, elements of E tilde. if those are Cauchy sequences in E. So Cauchy sequences are the new numbers. But not, not, not quite that. Equivalence classes of Cauchy sequences. How do you judge whether two equivalence classes are in fact the same? Well, he tells us, right? Two sequences of elements are called equivalent if the limit of their difference is zero. So where you know, um, well, let's just, let's say it this way: where x n is equivalent to y n. I mean, I mean, sorry, my bad. So b before I define an equivalence class, I typically define the equivalence relation, right? What's the equivalence relation? The equivalence relation is that x n is equivalent to y n if and only if um, you know x n minus y n goes to zero as n goes to infinity. And he, he's more careful. He does the norm, right? That what I mean by that is this, you know, the norm. And we're talking about the E norm, right? Okay. And um, so really E tilde is, what is E tilde? E tilde is really the set of Cauchy sequences, right? mod this equivalence so a point in the space e tilde is is not a cauchy sequence it's an equivalence class of of all cauchy sequences which you know you judge whether or not they're the same by whether or not they you know their difference limits to zero Uh -huh. I feel like, I mean, I feel like this is obviously right, but I, I, I just feel like there's a counter example somewhere with like the different constructions. I guess I just, I guess that's just a practice problem. So, I mean, pi is. Um, I say pi because it's constructed in a lot of different ways. Right. Um, but my point is that pi is, I mean, we have, I don't want to do it here, but you can prove that pi is irrational, right? Not pi is not is not rational, and yet, of course, if you want the sequence, right? If you want the sequence of uh, rational numbers whose limit is pi, it's easy enough to come up with it, right? Like, um, I, I would I just use xn, you know, um, three three point one. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, um, I mean, we can think we can think about other things, but I, I think it's like it's not a terribly controversial um, thing to like say that any real number can be can be easily seen to be the limit of a sequence of rational numbers. Yes. Um, and um, in this oh. Well, if they if they if they both limit to pi, then their difference is going to go to zero. Yeah, but, there, but if you take a part, if you take it from a particular, and um, that's what I was asking. Like, is what, when you take it to the nth like point, they don't, they wouldn't limit to zero. Oh, you'd have to show me. I don't believe that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's see here. So, um. Anyway, so this is, this is the object. We look at equivalence classes of Cauchy sequences, right? And 
So first of all, why, how do you see E inside this space? Like what is, what, it's kind of silly, like what is, how do you see um, um, injectivity? Yeah, let's 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 let me let me be more specific here. Suppose Z not is an element of E, right? Pick an element. What's the Cauchy sequence which should correspond to this element? It's very silly. You just use xn equal to Z not for all n. Use the constant the constant sequence. It's certainly a Cauchy sequence, right? And that is the one that's going to be identified with the numbers which are already in E. So in this stupid way, we get all of the numbers that are, well, all, all, I keep saying numbers, but all of the vectors which are already in E are there. Just use the constant sequences. Which isn't to say that there aren't other non-constant sequences which also limit to those numbers, I'm just saying that those are representatives. The, that is a token representative corresponding to each number, right? I mean, yeah, so. And then what's left to prove here? Well, you need to define how do we add Cauchy sequences? Excuse me, how do we add equivalence classes of Cauchy sequences? How do we take the norm of an equivalence class of Cauchy sequences? Right? Because that's what's at stake here. To show it's a completion, I have to show that it is, in fact, E tilde is a normed linear space that is, in fact, complete with respect to the one, this new, this new norm, all right? So how do, you, how do you think we should add, how should we add equivalence classes? Can I erase this? Can I erase this stuff, Audric? I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm not gonna erase, oh, yes, I'm good, okay, cool. So, um, so I, you know, I don't, I don't think I have time to prove all this stuff, and, and it, 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 you know, it's, it's, these are good exercises for you guys. But, um, so he uses the notation. Oh, my, my notation isn't quite right. This is our notation for sequence, right? So that's not good. I'm missing some brackets. So now you go. So like the bracket of the. This is the equivalence class of the Cauchy sequence, which is defined to be all Cauchy sequences such that, <laughs> um, you know, and I really, sorry, I should really have this here, whoopsie, um, you know, such that these are equivalent sequences, yeah. All right, so that's, that's the equivalence class with respect to this notion of equivalence. Anyway, it's really simple to add, what were you going to tell me? You don't even don't even look at the book. You can you can tell me how to do it. Yep, yep. You just add the sequences. And how do you scale or multiply these guys? Scale or multiply the sequence. Now, <laughs> of course. There's a lot of work to do here, right? Because to, to, to make this careful, we should show that these definitions are independent of our choice of representative. We are, after all, working with equivalence classes. So technically speaking, just like we did with modular arithmetic, we need to like, do our due diligence and show that um, our choice of representative doesn't influence you know, the sum. Like if I chose a different representative for um, these Cauchy sequences, right? Like suppose I did, you know, I, I think, I, I guess I can show that really quickly. X bar n um, plus Y bar n. Where I'm, where I'm assuming that these are equal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then that would be, of course, by our current definition, which we're, is under review, <laughs> right? So the, the question is, if I know you know, if I know that if I'm given xn is equivalent to x bar n, and if I, if I also am given that yn is equivalent to y bar n, I'd like to show that these two are also equal, which is to say, why is it that, you know, x plus y, 
x n y n x x n plus y n right why is that equivalent to x bar n plus y bar n right but that's actually very easy right because all you got to do is look at the norm of x n plus y n minus x bar n plus y bar n right if that norm is going to zero that proves the equivalence right but this norm is less than or equal to the norm of x n minus x bar n plus the norm of y n minus y bar n which by assumption up here are individually going to zero therefore so there you go that that proves that the uh, vector addition is independent of our choice of representative and, and a very similar and silly proof can be done for the other one so that's how we define so that that gives us a vector space structure and you can easily then, I mean, of course, there's more to do, right? We should prove it's associative, it's got the zero, it's got negatives, it's all of the things we know and love about a vector space, right? But those are all going to fall, you can check. It is a vector space. And then what's left to do is do what? Um, the other big thing is to define the, the one norm here, right? This, this norm on E tilde, how do we do that? That one's a little bit less obvious, I think. So. I'm running out of space. Curse this room. Um, <laughs> I'll do it up at the top, I guess. Oh, can I raise? Yeah. Well, I, see, but I might, might want them too. I want to have my conditions and cake as well. I'll need. You know, what I need to do is put up another board in this room. Which I should do. I can put a board up there for twenty bucks. I just need a little time. All right, so here's his definition. The norm of the equivalence class of, oh, look, he's dropped his, <laughs> look at that. All of a sudden, he's dropped, he's decided this is not what he wrote in the book. See, at this point, the author is like, I have had enough of this already, so I'm just going to write this. <laughs> all right, so he's dropped, his, he's dropped his extra sequence notation, all right? Um, and what's his definition? This is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the norm of xn. And he says, okay, so by, and by the lemma we didn't prove, but this one was easy to prove. I just skipped it because I was lazy. Um, lemma 1.44. It says that the limit of the norm exists for a, um, a Cauchy sequence. So if, if this is a Cauchy sequence, we know that the limit of the norm exists. And, um, and you can also prove that this is um, you know, independent of your choice of representative. We can prove that as well. All right. And, oh, look, there's my, here, look, check this out. He says, he, oh, he defines the map. This is better than what I did. I was just being sketchy. Here's the actual formula. Um, phi from e to e tilde, he defines it by phi of x is equal to the equivalence class of x, x. I mean, that's what I said, but that's nice and clear. So in other words, you take x to the constant sequence. That's the mapping. That's the injection. It satisfies A and B, which I just erased. <laughs> and then he says, to show that phi of E is dense in E tilde, how do you show that, how do you show phi of E is, is, is dense in E tilde? Right. Well, he says, Every element of E tilde is the limit. So if you, if you take the, 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 the um, here's the element. He says that that is the limit of what? It's the limit of the sequence phi, oh, where was I? Phi of xn.
Yeah. Yeah. So since every, what does it mean for it to be dense? I've forgotten already. My bad. Oh, the closure. Oh, so the clo the closure. So we, we need that the closure of phi of e is equal to e tilde, right? So he takes an arbitrary thing in e tilde, and he says, well, it's the limit of this, which is this is a typical. I mean, this is an element of phi of e, right? So. Um, the limit of that sequence gives us gives that so because it is the I mean this is this gives you the constant sequence x n which of course well anyway and then let's see here um, and then he proves that he told us complete all right and I think I'm out of time so I probably shouldn't but um, I don't think the proof is that hard to follow here um, man I, I well, I have to admit, we only have so much time. So um, I'd rather skip a, a little bit of details here and just emphasize what's going on. You know, this is really neat because this means we can take any space which is, you know, not complete and we can form its completion in this way. And, um, that's, that's kind of neat. And the interesting, what, what is perhaps more interesting is that if your space um, has different norms, it's not guaranteed that the completion with respect to one norm is going to be the same as the completion with respect to the other norm in the sense of I mean, yeah, they're not going to be the same set because this is, but more than that, they're not going to be the same in, in terms of their mathematical structure. Like, um, to give us give a concrete example of what I'm talking about. Now, finite dimensional vector spaces aren't a good example for this because finite dimensional vector spaces, um, as far as I can think of, are complete. And, and, they're, and they're complete spaces like Rn, Cn, these are complete. Set of matrices, complete. Um, you know, so like my favorite examples of finite dimensional vector spaces, these are all complete spaces. Which is super nice because it means you can make arguments about convergence by checking Cauchy, right? That's good. Um, rational numbers as a, ra like, I, I'm trying to think. Um, hmm. Something I'm not thinking about right. See, I know that there's two different ways to complete the rational numbers. With respect to the absolute value function, you get um, the real numbers, you know, up to isomorphism. Well, up to some notion of sameness, which I should try to make more rigorous for the purpose of this discussion. But on the other hand, you can look at rational numbers with what's called the p-adic norm. And with respect to the p-adic norm, if you take the completion of the rational numbers, you don't get real numbers. You get the p-adic numbers, which are different. Um, so, but anyway, um, that brings us to linear mappings. So that's what we'll, we'll do next time. So, and what, what's today? Uh, is it Friday? Uh, yeah, yes. yeah. So supposedly we're done with chapter one today, which is just not true. <laughs> right. So I think we've, I've got at least another day in linear mappings and at least another day in, um, in the contraction mapping stuff. So my guess would be we'll be a week, a week more in chapter one, but that kind of gives you a target for when you want to try to like, you know, be done with the homework in chapter one. Um, I did notice that like the later chapters don't have as many homework problems, right? Like the chapter ones, I think got 50, but the later chapters only have like 30. And you don't have to do all the problems. Like, you know, do enough that it's interesting and don't wear yourself out. You have other courses, I understand. Anyway, I think that's it for, uh, for today. Let me uh, shut this thing down. <laughs>